All right, hello. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to implement your own Miller Rabin primality test um, in Python. So, if you don't know how it works, you should go watch my first video, which should be over here above my face, somewhere over here. Um, yeah, go take a look at the video. Uh, I explain how the Mil Miller Rabin primality test works. Basically, it's a probabilistic function that tells you if a number n is prime or composite. Um, and this is useful for like cryptography, where you have to find if a number is prime or composite. Well, you just have to find big prime numbers. Um, so yeah, you should go watch that first video if you haven't already. Um, and before I go ahead with this video, you should understand that you should not, if you're making some kind of like online thing or app or website that stores any user information or includes any sign in or any cryptography thing, don't implement your own cryptography algorithms because it's most likely not going to be as secure as like open source libraries that um, cryptography experts have made. You should always go with uh, um, the libraries developed by experts because they're going to be way more secure. Um, they're not going to have bugs. It's good. It's probably going to be faster because like they're made by experts and people who like understand the algorithms better. Um, and yeah, you probably don't have. You're probably not going to create a library that's as good as theirs, and it's not going to be nearly as secure because it hasn't been reviewed many many times by experts. Also, it's just way easier to use a library, like. Programmers are lazy. We like to use libraries. So use a library. It's more secure. It's easier. Um, it's probably going to be faster. So yeah, don't make your own cryptography. Okay, that's that's not a good idea. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm just going to be writing this uh, writing this function. Um, and you can notice the text is pretty big. Um, so that like because because I, I don't want really want to edit this because um, school starts soon and. I, yeah, I, 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 this video is going to be pretty long, so I don't want to edit it. Um, so that's why I'm making the text super big. I wonder if I can make it bigger. Um, let's see. I don't know. Hang on. Uh, okay, well, it looks like I can't make it that much bigger. But this is probably big enough. Um, I don't know if you're viewing this on like a mobile device or something small or like um, your vision isn't so great. I don't know if you can see this well. I mean, I don't know if I can make it any bigger, but but the console is pretty good. So um, yeah, the console is pretty big. I'm pretty sure this is you'll, you'll be able to see this. Um, so the text is as big as I can make it. I'm sorry, but I just don't want to edit it. If I could, if I could edit it, um, I'd probably zoom in um, and focus in on the text that I'm currently writing or the console. I'd focus in on the console if I'm printing to that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to edit it. So yeah, this is just going to be big text. And you can already tell this video is going to be like really chill and more like a vlog and not something planned out. Like I've prepared for this. Like I know how to write the algorithm, but if there's any bugs, I'm just going to fix them on the spot. I'm not going to cut them out. Um, and I'll talk. I'll be slow. This video is going to be a long video. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's just let's just get right to it. Make sure you watch the first video. All right. So okay. Um, okay. So our algorithm takes in a takes in a number n, and it also takes in a number a. We're not going to be generating the number a. Um, it's going to be random, but we're not going to be generating it because um, we're going to make two separate function. One that takes in n and a, and another function that actually generates multiple values of the A and does those tests. So we're going to call this single test. Um, and it takes in the number N that we want to test for primeness and A, which is our witness. It's actually called a witness. Um, oh, also, in the first video, I forgot to do an example. Sorry about that. But um, I think it's kind of hard to do an example because there's these are such big numbers and I probably have to use a calculator. And I, I'd either have to memorize these or uh, do quick calculations. and um, and you know, I just forgot. So sorry. Okay, so we take in a number n, uh, testing for primeness and a witness a. We want to check that at least one of these numbers, one of these terms, um, is divisible by n. And the way we can do that is we can start with this odd, um, ex odd exponent first. So we can define an exponent. We can say it starts at n minus one, and then while it's odd, so we can say while exponent and wait while not ex exponent wait and one so this is saying while it's even because this and is a bitwise and function so if you have 
two strings like or two two numbers um, and I'm just gonna type out random ones here um, you have this integer over here and you bitwise and it with one all of the rest all of these numbers are gonna be zeros because the numbers in one um, the bits in one are all zeros except for this one and anding it bitwise anding it only um, only like only the last bit matters so if it's a zero um, that gets turned into a zero but if it's a one it stays as one so if it's odd uh, it'll be positive but if it's even it'll be not positive so if we put a not over here this is, just say, this is just saying while the exponent is even and then we can right shift it by one this is bit manipulations you're basically chopping off the right bit uh, this is equivalent to exp um, integer division by two it's the same thing but uh, it's faster because n is going to be pretty large I'll do a time complexity analysis at the end but um, I think doing bitwise um, operations is faster than using arithmetic operations that deal with integers in general so yeah okay um, now we've got exponent is odd right because it's broken out of the while loop so it's odd um, after it's odd we want to test if it's 1 mod n so if exponent oh yeah raising to the power of the exponent so we have to do a to the power of the exponent uh, mod n and Python I mean a lot of languages have this but basically if you read this it takes X Y and Z and it returns X to the power of Y mod Z um, and this is this is faster um, than than doing like than writing it out literally because you can do like um, optimizations like with binary exponentiation and stuff so it's just faster because you know it's like built in and it has access to the lower level like computation things um, so yeah we're gonna use this built-in function called pow it has a built-in um, modulus so a to the power of exp and exp right now is just n minus 1 over 2 to the k and it's odd so a to the power of exp mod n if this is equal to 1 then yeah we can we can return true because at least one of these terms is divisible by n okay and now we need to check through all of the rest of the terms so we need to multiply we need to multiply by 2 so let's just do um, let's just do a while loop while it's well okay while it's not equal to x sorry while it's not equal to n minus 1 oh over 2 actually why don't we just do while it's less than n minus 1 I think that'd be faster um, maybe actually I have no idea um, ooh, I'm not sure about that You know what? Let's do it. It's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're going to be checking that it's equal to negative one mod n because we need at least one of these to be negative one mod n. And so we can just take power. If a to the power of exponent, if that's uh, mod n, if if that's negative one. So we need to do n minus one because this doesn't do negative ones. Um, it only does positive, like positive remainders. Um, and negative one is the same as n minus one mod n because you know they're the same, right? So if it's one, then we can negative one. We can ret return true hmm. because that means um, that one of the terms over here is um, it means that this part is negative one mod n. So this part is divisible by n, and we only need at least one of them to be divisible by n. So uh, we can return true if at any point. One of them is divisible by n, um, and we also need to make sure to multiply exponent by 2. And left shifting, this is a left shift bitwise operator, it just appends a 0 to the end of the bit. And that's the same as multiplying it by 2, because in base 2, if you add a 0 to the end, that's the same as multiplying by 2. So, yeah, we have that. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it, because we do get to n minus 1 over 2. We're not going to check for Fermat's little theorem, because... Um, if it satisfies Fermat's little theorem, it, it it will satisfy Fermat's little theorem if and only if it satisfies what at least one of these terms divides n. So, because all of these all of these steps over here are reversible, so Fermat's little theorem implies um, the Miller-Rabin test. But the Miller-Rabin test, um, I don't know, I I think it's stronger or something. Um, yeah, it's stronger because 
Oh wait, sorry. Yeah, Fermat's little theorem does not imply the Miller-Rabin test, but the Miller-Rabin test implies Fermat's theorem. So we're not going to check for Fermat's little theorem. Um, and if at no point, if at, if no if none of these terms is divisible by n, then we can turn false. Okay. Um, so we can write that single test, um, but now we need several tests, um, and we need random values of a. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import the random module. And we're going to use random.systemRandom. And this is more secure. It's more random than um, than using just random.randrange because random.randrange uses pseudo random numbers, and those aren't those are generated by an algorithm. And if you know stuff about the hardware and the software of the machine that's running this random um, this random function, then you can. It's like it's it's not truly random, so it's a bit easier to crack it if you're looking to hack the system. On the other hand, if you use um, what's called cryptographically strong um, randomness, then you can have like basically true random because it uses stuff from the system and the environment and stuff. Uh, it's harder to crack, so it's harder to hack. That's why it's called cryptographically secure. So we're going to use this random dot system random and die. This is just a dice. Um, that's why I'm calling it die. Um, so this die has a random range function. We can apply that. So I'm just going to load that, load that at the beginning. OK, now we can do multiple tests. So I'm going to just call this Miller Rabin. Um, we're going to take in the number n, which is the number we test for primeness. And k equals the number of values for a we're going to choose. And k is going to be 40, because that's what I mentioned in the video. Um, yeah, over here. And this is, this is the number of values of a we're going to check. We're going to do the test on. So OK, let's do that. So. We're going to check for k values. And OK, so we need to generate a random value of a. And I'm not going to check that a hasn't been done before in our in um, previous iterations of this loop, because n is going to be very large. It's going to have a lot of bits, um, because middle rabbit is really only useful. Actually, I mean, in cryptography, you're going to need really large prime numbers. So the likelihood you get the same a multiple times is very, very low. And it, even if you do, it's only going to happen once or twice. It's not going to ve happen very often. And that doesn't reduce the accuracy by too much. So it goes from like, it, it, it doesn't change very much. So we're not going to check for uh, distinct values of A. So we're going to do die dot, die is the thing we, we had over here, um, die dot ran range. And this needs to be between 1 and, oh, actually, it needs to be greater than 1. So we need to make sure it's greater than one, two, and n minus one non-inclusive because random range is non-inclusive. So we have a value of a. Um, so we do a single test. I should probably get rid of this new line. Okay, if single test on n and the value of a. Oh yeah, sorry. We're checking for compositeness. So we're checking if it fails at any point. So if it fails at any point, if it's not. Um, if it's not verified as prime by the test, um, then we return false because we know it's composite. And otherwise, we can return true. So now we're done with our function. Um, we can check if, for example, um, the number 97, if that's prime. And it should return. OK, we did something wrong. OK, there's an infinite loop in here somewhere. Um, Um, hmm, that's strange. Okay, see, um, this is a vlog, more more vloggy because. Oh, yeah, I made this mistake before. Yeah, we actually need to assign it to the new value. Okay, um, yeah, a lot of you were probably shouting at me when I was writing that. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so it says it's true. It says it's true again. So 97 is probably prime. And we actually don't need to run this many times. I'm just checking that it works. 91 is not prime because it's what? It's like 7 times something. 7 times 13. So it says 91 is not prime. This is 91 is not prime. OK, so I don't know. Should I do the time complexity analysis first, or should I do um, something else? 
So I've decided to split this video into two parts because it's getting way too long. This first part, which you just watched, was only about the fundamentals of implementing the miller rabin primality test. The second part will include how to generate a prime, as well as the time complexity analysis of the program. Um, it's, it's a lot longer um, and a lot more uh, less edited, I guess, but they're both not edited. But it's like less edited, um, more vloggy. So yeah, you can watch part two by hopefully clicking on the card over here. Um, if you're on mobile, maybe not, but I'll put the link in the description as well. Thanks.